Hello everyone, welcome to Woody's Wisdom. You all know me, I'm your furry friend, that really handsome English golden retriever at Project Harmony. Okay, so I don't have an English accent or anything, but I am just about the friendliest dog on the planet, especially if you happen to have treats with you. You probably also know I love spending time with neighbors and kids who want to share their experiences and challenges. Today I'm here with my friend Javier, and I think he's wondering how he can spot a trustworthy adult. The world can be a tricky place, and we're here to help him and you feel more comfortable about asking questions and talking about challenges. I'm hoping we learn something valuable together. Hey, Javier, what's on your mind? Well, Woody, the other day I was at our community pool, kind of just sitting in the sun. I'd been swimming for about an hour, and I was tired. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw my neighbor, Seth, heading home. He's only about seven. He was wearing a bathing suit, flip-flops, and he had a towel around his neck. I didn't pay much attention at first, but because he's small for his age, I kept an eye on him. Then I saw a teenager, about 15 years old, come up and grab Seth's towel and start snapping him with it. Oh, that hurts. That's happened to me before and I sure didn't like it. I don't think anybody likes to get hit with a wet towel. I also remember another time when something happened to me that made me feel really frustrated and mad, and it felt bad too. I love my groomer, but she was on vacation, so I had to get a different one. He was nice and all. He didn't mean to hurt me, but he used the wrong kind of brush. It was tough and wiry, and it scraped my skin. I yelped a lot, and finally my handler understood what was going on and asked the groomer to stop. Did Seth tell the teenager to stop? He tried to, but the guy wasn't listening. The towel was leaving red welts on Seth's back, and he was really freaking out. So I tried to get the attention of a lifeguard, but he said I wasn't supposed to distract him, and he couldn't leave the pool area anyway. All the other lifeguards were gone, on break or something. Then I saw Mrs. Rogers. I knew she would listen to me because she always says hi and asks how I'm doing. I just wanted an adult to know what was going on. She couldn't come with me because she was there with her little kids. The oldest is five and the baby is only six months old, but I knew she would at least keep an eye on me and Seth. Good thinking. What did you do then? I ran out of the fenced area as fast as I could to catch up to them. I grabbed the towel from the teenager. That guy was way bigger than me, but I think I really surprised him. I told him the lifeguard was watching us, even though I kind of doubt that he was. But he could see Mrs. Rogers was looking at us. The teen took off, and I asked Seth to walk back to the pool with me, even though he just wanted to keep walking home. I didn't think it was safe to let him go alone, and neither did Mrs. Rogers. She called his house, and then she asked a neighbor of hers to watch her kids for just a while, and so we could both wait with him in the parking lot until his mom came. Oh yeah, Mrs. Rogers had some popsicles and a cooler in her car, so she gave one to each of us. It tasted great. That was a brave thing you did, Javier. Did you know that you're what we call an upstander? You deserve a high five, Paul. Earth, way to go. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Woody. But what's an upstander? Someone who has the courage to stand up for a person who is being targeted in a bullying situation. Okay, so then what happened? As soon as I could, I talked to one of the lifeguards who was back from break and told her what happened. She called another guard over, and they asked me to point out the guy, but he was gone by then. I told her the next time he showed up, I'd let them both know. They promised to be more available, and they were a lot nicer than the first lifeguard. Well, Javier, you did the right thing by asking Mrs. Rogers to help. Sometimes it's necessary to go to more than one adult to get someone to pay attention. You know, adults can have a lot on their minds, and they sure don't mean to ignore you. But you didn't stop at the lifeguard. You looked for another adult who could keep an eye out. I happen to know it's true that swimmers aren't supposed to distract the lifeguard on duty, especially if there's only one. That's not to say you didn't have a really good reason for trying to get his attention. He was just so crabby about it. But... Maybe I would be too. It was a way hot day and the kids were acting up, running around, breaking rules, and he was having to yell a lot. But I still think he could have been nicer. 
you're probably right. He should have at least listened and offered you some advice. He could have spared a quick look, right? That's what I think. So here's my question, Woody. How can I tell if an adult is safe to talk to? I mean, that lifeguard wasn't going to hurt me or anything, but he sure didn't want to listen to me either. And Seth could have been in a lot of trouble. Right, he could have been. The lifeguard you asked first was probably a bit overwhelmed that day. Or maybe he's like that all the time, we don't know. Can you think of other steps you could have taken to keep things safe? Mm-hmm. I I'm going to introduce myself and Seth to all the lifeguards so they know us. And I'm going to make sure I get to know some of the parents who come to the pool so there's a bigger group of adults that I can go to. What if you're the only one around who can lend a hand? I'd do exactly what I did and then let as many adults know afterward what happened. But how will I know if I can trust the adults I report to? When you're trying to figure out if an adult is someone you can trust, it helps to do what animals do. Use your instincts first. Instincts? What do you mean exactly by instincts? Let's ask a Tellerix. A Tellerix alba ventris. A Tellerix alba huba? <laughs> a Tellerix alba ventris. She's the smartest African pygmy hedgehog in North America, possibly in all of South America too. Speaks five languages, can do calculus problems in her head, plays piano, but only in private, can recite the wreck of the Hesperus from memory, and is an excellent pole vaulter. At least that's what I've heard. Wow, she sounds amazing. Doesn't sound like she has a lot of time to give advice. That's her main job. She's like Siri or Alexa, but she never just says, interesting question, and lets it go. She listens, she ponders, gives the situation a lot of thought, and she really comes up with useful answers. What was your question again? Woody, you said if you're trying to figure out if an adult can be trusted, you should use your instincts like animals do. And I asked, what do you mean by the word instinct? Instinct. Okay, here goes. By the way, I'm the only one who can contact her. I do it through a series of elaborate sensory sounds like rings, dings, chimes, clangs, bangs, and the high-pitched stuff only animals can hear. Um, Atilorex? Are you there? Oh, uh, Woody, is that you? Come and say bye, you old dog. Hey, I'm fine, thanks, and I'm not old. But yes, it's me, Addy. Oh, and this is my good friend, Javier, and he and I need your help. Oops, wait a sec, first things first. Javier, may I introduce Atilorex? And Atilorex, allow me to introduce my friend, Javier. It's nice to meet you, Miss Atilorex. Guten Tag. It's very nice to meet you, Javier. But you can just call me Addy. How can I be of service? Can you tell us about the word instinct? Oh, easy. Instinct is a way of acting or thinking that just comes naturally. Javier, is there a sport or computer game that you've just always been good at? Um... I'm a pretty good soccer player. I'm usually a center back, but sometimes I play goalie. And I've always been good at Minecraft. Complimente, good for you, Javier. Woody, what do you have instincts for? Ho oh, ho ho, I have lots of instincts. First of all, I possess an incredible sense of smell. I can detect the presence of one cup of tea with sugar in an Olympic sized pool of water. And my night vision is really off the charts. And I can usually figure out immediately if you got a treat for me, so no point in trying to hide it. But my favorite one is knowing when somebody is struggling with big feelings and needs a wondrous woody nuzzle. I'm famous for those. And I almost always seem to know if a human being is kind or not. That one is probably my most useful instinct. Well, I'm not a dog. Not that I don't sometimes wish I was. So I need some clues I can count on. You have three things you can count on right now. Your eyes, your ears, and your brain. You probably know that sometimes the people you automatically think you can trust aren't always very trustworthy. Yeah, I used to think my soccer coach was such a great guy and somebody I could depend on to understand, you know, stuff. But I guess he's mainly interested in winning games and that's about it. Maybe he doesn't have people skills exactly, just the skills that make him good at coaching sports. Yeah, he is a good soccer coach. Javier, I want you to think of an adult who isn't related to you, but who you truly know you can trust. I'll give you some time to think of someone. 
Oh, I, I know someone right now. It's the counselor at my school, Mrs. Gonzalez. How do you know you can trust her? Well, first of all, she treats all people the same, even the kids that sometimes act up. She's nice to everybody. And she doesn't just say she cares. I can tell she really does. Can you give us an example? Like when November rolled around last year and it started to get really cold. One of my friends was coming to school every day without a winter coat. She saw what was going on and asked him to come to her office. Of course, a bunch of kids started giving him a bad time about having to go to the counselor's office. But it turns out she just had some winter coats she wanted him to try on and see if one fit. She gave him a hat and gloves, too. She didn't make a big deal about it. She just did it. Excellent observation, Javier. Can you think of any other reasons to trust her? Well, she's really busy all the time, but she stops us in the hall or sometimes talks to us in the cafeteria or while we're waiting in line for the bus. She asks us how we're doing, do we need help with anything, like math, what kinds of clubs would be good to start, like a book club, a Roblox group. She really wants us to make friends with each other. Mrs. Gonzalez sounds like a terrific person. You've noticed lots of things about her that make her trustworthy. Do you have anything else to share? I guess I would say she respects us and our feelings. Otherwise, I think she would have embarrassed my friend about the coat. Good point, Javier. I guess we all feel pretty safe around her. She pays attention to what's happening with us, even if she doesn't know the whole story. She'll figure out a way to find out the real facts, not just spread rumors. And if she's mistaken about something, she'll take responsibility for it, and she always apologizes. Javier, you used your powers of observation, watching and listening, to figure out for yourself that Mrs. Gonzalez is an adult you can trust. I did? You sure did. But can I ask you a couple of other things? Sure, Woody. What do you want to know? How about school activities like soccer games and science fairs and things like that? Does she support those? Yeah, she always shows up for games. Well, not every game, but lots of them. And she always gets excited when we win competitions. She congratulates everybody. But even if we don't win, she still comes up with nice stuff to say to the kids who participated. Even the ones from other schools, the ones we're competing against. Mrs. Gonzalez sounds like a really fair person, a kind person, and someone who really cares about all of you. Yeah, she does. Javier, can you think of some more people in your life besides Mrs. Gonzalez that you know you can trust? Hmm. Well, well, sure. Of course, there's my mom and dad. They make lots of sacrifices for me and my brother and sister, and they try to get us what we want, whenever they can. I trust my grandparents, both sets. They've worked really hard, and now they're retired, so they can fill in when my parents can't, like, pick us up or babysit. Although I don't need a babysitter anymore. Anybody else? I can trust the policeman who's assigned to our school, Officer Kramer. I've seen him in action. He listens, he's never rough, he doesn't yell. He's like Mrs. Gonzalez. He treats everybody the same. Mm, the lunch ladies are always nice and patient. There are some great teachers. The vice principal and the principal are always helpful. Some of my neighbors are great. There are a few that don't seem to understand kids very well, but I try to stay away from them. I mean, I would probably not ask them for help, I don't think. But there are quite a few I know I could ask. And all my friends at Project Harmony, like you, Woody. That's right. You can trust all of us here to care about you and have your best interests at heart. Arf. Woody, would you like to recap for us? Well... I don't know about that. Oh, okay, Addie. But I may need some prompts if I get stuck. We'll help you, won't we, Javier? Absolutely. All right, here goes. How can you tell if an adult can be trusted? First of all, a trusted adult is somebody who really cares. They care about all babies, kids, teens, adults, and especially pets, like me. Good start. Keep going. Okay. It's someone who does kind things for all living beings but doesn't expect a reward. It's someone who encourages everybody to do their best and achieve their goals but doesn't force anyone to excel. 
just encourages them. Someone who thinks it's a good idea to get to know each other and become friends, or at least support each other, and wish each other well. Someone who makes everyone feel safe. Someone who will admit when they're wrong and then apologize. Someone who may not have all the answers, but they'll do whatever it takes to find out where and how to get help. And then keep working on getting that help. Oh, that wore me out. Magnificent, Woody. Wow, Woody. That was great. But now, I'd like to ask Miss Addie some questions. Fire away. Are you an expert pole vaulter? My breed only grows from 6 to 10 inches, so pole vaulting? No way, dude. But I'm an excellent swimmer, climber, digger, and jogger. Can you really do calculus problems in your head? I wish, but I do know the derivative of the function f of x equals 4 cosine 2x plus 1 og x plus x. Do you? <gasps> no. Next question. Mm -hmm. Woody says you speak five languages. Not true. I know the romance languages. Romance languages? Yeah, like French, Italian, Portuguese, Romanian, etc. And 17 hedgehog languages. Because there's 17 species of hedgehog. And English, of course. Can you really play the piano? Yep, I can play the minute waltz in 30 seconds when I run up and down the keys. What about that poem, The Wreck of the Hesperus? Can you recite it from memory? Um, it's pretty long, and I need some time to get into character. How many characters are there? Two. The sea captain and his daughter. And loads of sound effects. But there's another poem I can recite from memory. Would you like to hear it? Sure. Don't worry. It's short. Some answers can't be found in books. Don't even bother to look at pie charts, flow charts, modern art, or the extracts of Rene Descartes. There's just one place to find your truth. Your heart. I like that. Who wrote it, Addie? I did, Woody. Oops, oh, look at the time. I gotta go. Ramasman, that means fare thee well in Romanian. Woody and Javier, it's been real. Stay safe, you two. Call anytime. Javier, do you feel like you can figure out who to trust now? I do, Woody. Thanks for introducing me to Addie. And I appreciate all your help. And thanks to everybody for tuning in. Bye for now, friends. We'll be back again soon. Oh! Thanks for listening to Woody's Wisdom. Our show is produced by Project Harmony and Respect.